Hello and welcome! Here is Ethereum in 2025. Buy and hold this orange dashed line. Spend most of the year going nowhere. Had a couple of strong runs, a couple of deep drops and then more or less ended flat. The blue line is the 30 day momentum rule. Literally, is the price higher than it was a month ago? This strategy produces a completely different picture. No leverage, no optimization, no indicators, no machine learning, totally boring. Just a basic trend filter and as you see, the equity curve takes off. What's interesting is where this works. Most altcoins or trash coins, whatever you want to call it, are way too chaotic for a signal like this. They move in sharp burst, reverse suddenly or sit dead for months. Those kind of environments tend to kill medium term momentum. Ethereum though behaves differently, has deeper liquidity and more importantly it has actual multi-week narratives. Things like staking changes, L2 activity, burn mechanics and ecosystem upgrades. That kind of flow creates cleaner directional moves and a slow signal like this can latch onto them. And Bitcoin, you might expect it to work even better there. But in recent years, Bitcoin has acted much more like a macro asset. There are long, long consolidation phases. ETF flows are slow and steady and the price moves more gradually. You don't always get the same kind of sustained displacement you still see on ETH. So the result you saw on the chart isn't accidental or you still see in the chart isn't accidental. It's really a reflection of how these assets behave structurally. With that context, let's walk through the code from top to bottom and look at how this simple model is built. By the way, this is by no means financial advice. The goal here is to look at the data and understand the me mechanics behind the strategy. All right, first things first. For mental support, I'm going to use some libraries. Matplotlib to create the most beautiful charts in the world, NumPy for some conditional checkings, Pandas for data handling, and Client from the Python Binance library to make use of some convenient functions such as pulling crypto price data. Here I'm just instantiating the client to be able to actually use it conveniently. And then this function is pretty much self-explanatory. So this function is just pulling crypto price data for a given symbol. Let's say Bitcoin, Ethereum or whatever you want to pull here. And this is just pulling K-line data. So open, high, low, close volume or candlestick data for this given symbol on a certain time frame. In this case, I'm using daily data and it is going back and days. So in this case, I'm just pulling 320 days back. You can also keep that flexible and pass that as a parameter. But for now, it's perfectly fine as it is. So what else does this function do? This pulling some cryptic, unreadable data in a list, which I'm then just transforming to a data frame. So I'm pulling that into a data frame and then just filter it for the very first column, which I know is the timestamp, the second column, which I know is the open and the fourth column, which I know is the close. How can I know? Because I read the API documentation. So you don't have to. Then I'm renaming those columns to what they are. So the first one is timestamp, the second one is the open and the third one is the close. Then I'm setting the index of the data, data frame to the time frame. So I got a nice data frame with the open and close column and a timestamp index. And as the index from the API comes as a Unix timestamp, which no one can read except machines, then you just transform this using a two day time transformation. So I'm just replacing the index with a human readable timestamp index. In the end, as open and close come from the API and per default are string type values, I'm transforming them to floating type values here. Nothing more than that, super simple. So to test that, I'm just going to call that function on Ethereum here. And with that, I'm getting a nice data frame like this. So as said, open, 
and close values here for a daily timestamp here. So going roughly or pretty much specific from the beginning of the year until today. Now, if I pull, let's say Bitcoin here, this is the exact same logic here, right? But we are keeping it Ethereum for now. Next is the strategy function. And this looks a bit, you know, cryptic, complicated, but it's actually extremely and super straightforward here. So what this is doing line by line. So this is taking the data frame, obviously the price data frame with the open and close uh, column as an argument, takes a look back, which is just the momentum look back. So as I said in the beginning, I want to compare today's price with the price 30 days ago to check, am I in a trend or, or rather an uptrend or a downtrend here? And then I'm applying a fee and this is a realistic spot fee on Binance. So this is a round trip fee, right? So meaning you have to pay the fee twice. So I'm just multiplying the fee here uh, by two. So the standard fee is 0.075% ish on Binance. And this is important because if you don't apply the fees, you know, you won't get a realistic uh, PL from the strategy. Now this is just making a copy of the data frame. This is this is good practice. You don't have to do that. This is just avoiding changing the original data. So it takes a copy and then you do some amendments by adding columns here. And the first one is extremely straightforward. You just take the relative change of the close price. Reason behind that is you calculate the bind hold return, which is just, you know, the cumulative return of the asset. This is bind hold. And we're using that to calculate the bind hold return later on. Then this one, this is an important one. This is the momentum calculation. And this is so simple. You're just taking the current close and set that into relation to the close 30 days back. So you shift 30 rows and with that, you know, 30 rows back, what was the price? And with that, you know, you have a positive or negative momentum. So if the price today is higher than 30 days ago, we consider the trend up. If it's lower, the trend is down. Super straight forward. Then we are converting the momentum into positions. So how is this working? You're just doing a conditional check here. So if the momentum is positive, you want to go long. So you add a one here in the position column. If the momentum is negative, you add a minus one here, indicating a short position. And if none of this is true, you just assume you are flat. So this is just zero for flat. So whenever you have a positive momentum, you are long. Whenever you have a negative momentum, you are short. And that is in every single row where this condition is fulfilled. So you have a momentum, all right? And now this is a super important one because this as you see, it's just forward filling and filling in an NAN values worth zero here. So how does this work or what is the uh, background of this fill here? You hold the position until it flips. Means we stay in the same direction until momentum actually changes. So how would that work? Let's say you are long and then in the next row, uh, you would be long, 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 long until you are flat or short. So this is just forward filling the last signal until you get a change of the signal. Nothing more than that. Trend following in general doesn't flip constantly and that's part of the reason why the fees will stay pretty low as you will see in some second. Now this post trade is just execution timing. So what is this exactly doing? This is super important. The signal is based on the close. But you only know that value after the buy-ins. So the earliest realistic execution is the next day's open. So you need to shift here. Otherwise, you have a, you're introducing forward-looking bias here. By shifting the position by one day, you're making sure you're not using any future information. Super important for building and backtesting trading strategies, as you know, if you've followed me for a longer time. Now, this return OC, this is just the close versus the open. 
you just calculate the intraday return from the open to the close of the same day. Since we enter at the open, where we got a signal, this is the part of the move that we actually capture in this model. Now, a very small clarification. In crypto, there isn't a real overnight session. So if you wanted to model a system that holds 24 seven, you would normally just use close to close returns with a one day lag on the position. For this video, I'm keeping it simple and focused on the open to close logic. The main idea of the strategy doesn't change. And for the record, I've tested it and the difference is such, so marginal, it really doesn't matter. But if you want to model it like this, you take when you enter into the position, you take the intraday return. When you are just staying in the position, you take the close to close return. But I recommend just taking the intraday return. The difference is essentially not existent. All right. And as you see, you're just taking the post trade then and multiply it with the intraday return. So what you're doing here in a nutshell is you check do I have a position here? And if I have a position, so if I'm in the position, I'm just locking in the return. So this is then parole. Let's say you're in a position, you have a one, then you take the return of that day and you don't have the same day because you shifted whenever you're in a position and then you just lock in the return. So next day is coming. You're still long, so you lock in the return. Next day is coming. You're still long until the signal flips. So you you cash in all the returns until the signal flips. Nothing more than that. Super simple design. Now, these last two lines are handling transaction costs. And it's important to understand how it works. We only subtract a fee when the position actually changes direction. Now, these last two lines are handling transaction costs. And it's important to understand how it works. We only subtract a fee when the position actually changes direction. For example, from long to short or from short to long. If the strategy stays long for 30 days, there is no fee during those 30 days. And the same is true for staying short. Now, how does it work technically? You take the post trade value of the current row, compare it versus the post trade value of the previous row. And if there is a change, then you know that the position switched and you have to pay fees. And if that is the case, you're getting a one here. And with that, you apply the fees to the current strategy return and subtract it from the return. And what you're seeing here is I'm taking a very conservative approach because I'm applying the full round trip on only one flip here. So the results might be even better than that. But in general, this model flips very rarely. So the total fees stay small overall. That's one of the reasons medium term momentum often behaves better than short term signals. There's simply not much turnover. So again here, each flip counts as one transaction event and we subtract the fee for that day. To summarize the full logic, you calculate momentum after obviously pulling price data, turn it into a long short position, hold that position until momentum flips, shift it by one day for execution, take open to close returns, and then you subtract the fee only when the direction changes. The entire model is built around realistic timing and low turnover. Now I'm calling this function, then build an equity curve. So I'm taking the strategy return and cumulate it. Just simple return accumulation here, nothing special. And the same is true for the buy and hold return. So I'm just taking rest and the return and cumulate it. And with that, I can compare the strategy versus buy and hold. And you see this insane return on the time series momentum the name or the academic expression of that phenomenon. There is one practical detail here, which I want to mention and which is very important. And I'm happy to cover that in future videos. As you know, I have to tease if that topic is interesting and relevant for you. 
Because this strategy, as you might know, following the uh, cross development of Ethereum, the strategy depends quite a bit of short positions. And the short periods contribute noticeably to the performance. Spot markets, which I'm taking as the base here, as you saw, not futures, don't always allow clean short exposure. So a real implementation would normally use Ethereum perpetual futures. All right, so this is a caveat here, but again, I also tested that, the difference is not that significant, but this is to keep in mind. On the other hand, if we take a look at the fee structure again, if you're doing that with perpetual perpet futures, this is a very difficult word for me, sorry for that, then you also pay way less fees because the spot market is more expensive than the future market, all right? It's just a side note. So if you want to bring this to the next level, you would actually work with future price data. And I'm very happy to do that. I just need your feedback if that is relevant for you. All right. Last but not least, mm, we got some plotting here. So we want to have that visualized. Mm. I don't even know why I'm doing that here. That's redundant code. It's not supposed to be here. So I'm just taking the equity curve and the buy and hold curve and plot that using Matplotlib and getting the chart from the very beginning showing the insane outperformance of time series momentum. And you see here this nice performance with the negative trend of Ethereum and the recent pass. All right. Now let's play all that through for another asset just to show you how this is looking like for instance, for Bitcoin. And as I said in the beginning, the effect is not as pronounced for Bitcoin, but it is also working, all right? So I'm just changing the asset here. Same story, you pull data, then you apply the momentum function on Bitcoin. And you see the buy and hold return on Bitcoin uh, until now with this year is uh, roughly 7%, but the time series return on Bitcoin is 8%, which is outperforming the buy and holds return, which is also a very interesting observation here. All right, this is the uh, chart, chart you see here. And you also see that you have quite some returns on the downside here, similar to Ethereum. And now you could argue, well, you just took a look at this here. What does this say? You have to take a look at the longer time a frame to actually make this uh, uh, legit or believable. So I could go back 1,300 days and you would think all the edge is gone. So now I'm get going back until 2022. So what is that? Three years roughly. And you will see that my time series momentum return is still insane compared to this is 130% roughly versus 18% buy and hold Ethereum return here. And you see both uh, profit taking on the downside and on the upside here, which makes this strategy so unbelievably strong because of the nature of the asset. We can even go back further and pass if you, if you want that. So maybe just go in front of the pandemic something 2019 so i mean you're comparing asset worth 3k to 200 now but still let's take a look at that you see yeah this this incredible return but still you have an outperformance for the time series momentum strategy which at least i find very very interesting so yeah let me know your thoughts uh, below that was the complete walkthrough of the strategy simple idea but when the asset has the right structure like Ethereum often does, even basic momentum can produce very clear results. Once again, as a reminder, no financial advice. It's meant to show how these models work and what kind of behavior they can capture. And once again, in practice, you'd normally run something like this on ETH or Ethereum perpetual futures. So the long and short side are both realistic. If you're interested in that or diving more into that, let me know below and I thank you very much for watching. I'm curious about your thoughts. 
and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye. Bye.